The San Antonio Mennonite Church is Anabaptist. We went to a theological protest about 500 years ago, essentially rooted in the understanding that all of our theology must be lived theology. Everything we understand about God and Jesus must be reflected in the way we live and journey. All of our prayer must be balanced with actions and all of our actions must be steeped in prayer. Our community is centered in hospitality and healing, pilgriming and peacemaking. It's a long journey home, but we're all walking home together in the peace of Christ. Welcome to the San Antonio Mennonite Church. I'm Diane, the pastor of family, and Pastor John will be sharing the sermon today in a little bit as we continue this series on rewording, on how words in the context of prayer in our spiritual vocabulary have a different meaning and intent than they do in our everyday cultural context. This week, we're going to talk about following the way and how that is about experiencing a rhythm rather than really trying to get somewhere to a destination. It's a good time to talk about rhythm as the seasons are changing. It's pretty chilly out here and we've come through the brilliance and the heat of summer and now the squirrels are starting to bury the pecans and there have been some monarchs coming through and migrating birds and the plants are starting to store up and get ready for a time of stillness before we once again get to experience the bursting of life in the spring. So it's lovely to be a part of that rhythm. And we have our own rhythms too each week in our church and during our worship service. So if you'd like to enter your greetings into the chat as we get started, you are welcome to do that. We can welcome one another and also pass the peace of Christ to one another as we allow ourselves to receive and to give this peace that is beyond anything the world can offer. We can't understand it and yet we can be conduits of it. So let's pass the peace of Christ while we listen to a song. And we're also gonna hear from some of our small group leaders before the sermon. And then after that, we'll have a time to share out loud together our greetings and also a time for prayer.
Hello, we would like to invite you to chess tournament. We will be hosting at the Church Plaza next to Cafe Cotidiano. We are planning on meeting every Tuesday at 6 p.m. There are no requirements to join the tournament. All you need to do is send us a message through the Slack app or you may send me a text at 210-286-9176. Just include your name and the uh, preferred way for us to contact you. We will be giving some gift certificates to Café Cotidiano to the uh, first eight participants that register after they play their first game. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Hi, we are Jim and Ruth Mellinger, and we would like to invite you to our Thursday night group uh, looking at the book, The God Who Sees, Immigrants, the Bible, and the Journey to Belong by Karen Gonzalez. Uh, we found it to be a very interesting book. I think it'd be interesting to almost everybody, uh, particularly with the work that we have going here at the church, but the chapters are interspersed between personal story of the author and the immigrants and migrants of the Bible. Uh, and so uh, each week we take one of those chapters and look at it and discuss it. Yeah, um, so anyway, if you're interested, you can uh, jump in at any point because each chapter and each story is different and is kind of contained within itself. Um, bes um, besides the, the chapter, she also does things on the, the sacraments of the church, looking at it from the point, standpoint of the immigrant who is herself an immigrant uh, when she came to the United States at nine and a half years old from Guatemala. So anyway, easy read, but very thoughtful. <laughs> exactly, so if you get a chance, we'd love to have you join us on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Good morning. Diane asked me to say a few words about the book we'll be starting this week in the Wednesday Night Centering Prayer Group. It's a book by Richard Rohr entitled Everything Belongs, The Gift of Contemplative Prayer. The book is simply written typical of Rohr's style and very accessible and at the same time very challenging and I will add not easily summed up which I suppose is true anytime we attempt to speak of contemplative prayer so as a way to start talking about it I'll first mention what the book isn't about it's not a simple list of tips to figure out how to do this thing called contemplative prayer it's not about contemplation as a path or practice to fix or to problem solve. And it doesn't offer any tools to employ in our ego's relentless self-improvement project, as appealing as that might be. Rather, in a somewhat meandering way, Rohr helps us understand what contemplation is about and how it can be seen as gift. His words lead us to an expansion of how we see things, moving us beyond the senses and beyond dualism, where truth is found in paradox, that is, where we can see that opposites and contradictions are not conflicting, and where we find that our choices are not limited by these apparent contradictions. He steers us toward a deeper prayer life and a transformed life. So I hope you'll join us on Wednesday as we pray together and ponder the possibilities of how everything belongs. These last weeks we've been talking about our normal cultural vocabulary and the spiritual vocabulary of prayer. And how oftentimes there's a, there's a bit of a disconnect that's important to notice. Like, for instance, hate. We talked about a few weeks ago how we see it as this evil force to hide and bury in our culture, but spiritually we understand hate is our soul's natural response to evil that has to be openly offered to God. And we talked about home. Culturally, we understand that as a safe place that we own and we control. Uh, but spiritually, we understand home and prayer as God's place of welcome, God's place of transformation. And culturally, we talked about watching as this passive challenge to our patience. But spiritually and in prayer, watching is this active participation uh, in the act of receiving. We talked uh, last week about this, this phrase, save me. Culturally, that means preserve me, preserve what I want. Um, 
but spiritually in our spiritual vocabulary save me means to transform me asking for transformation today we talk about the way um, in our cultural understanding we we understand that we can make our own way in the spiritual vocabulary of prayer the way is something we receive it's god's uh, and we receive it we'll, we'll dive down a little bit more into what it means to be people of the way and how it's a rhythm it's a rhythm between receiving um, and resurrection power uh, and all of that means as we continue this this exploration of the spiritual vocabulary of prayer we spend a lot of time problem solving all day long, we're problem solving. We're searching for, we're trying out solutions to our, our problems. Whether it's, you know, really simple, like how to fill up a lunchbox, to uh, really stressful, like how to navigate across the city. Or sometimes it's really painful, like um, the hard choices we're making, what we're going to take on, what we're going to let go of. But we're always, we're always problem solving. Sometimes it's issues uh, in our relationships, or sometimes it's, it's, it's conflicts uh, that we are trying to solve. Um, and generally, if we seek advice, if we seek advice to help us fix things, or maybe you turn on YouTube, um, if we seek advice to just about any problem, you're going to hear someone tell you the way to fix it. Uh, there is a way to do it. And also, if you turn to YouTube, by the way, there is a 100% chance that down in the comments section, someone has written, that is not the way to do it. There's a way to do things. There's a way not to do things. There's also this um, dominant stream in our culture that says that you should eschew outside advice or patterns, and we should, quote, make our own way. It's such a... It's such an interesting word, uh, the way. Culturally we, culturally, we understand the way as a solution to our problems. There is a way to solve it. And, and if we seem, by the way, unable to solve anything, folks are going to say we've lost our way. Um, culturally, we, we believe that ways can be made, though sometimes we end up way off. But in the, in the spiritual vocabulary of prayer, way is a hugely important word, but it means something very, very different than in our cultural context. Way is used, um, is, it's used through all these ancient stories in the scripture. Uh, partly that's because all the main characters are immigrants and they're always traveling, but mostly it's because the word way is used to show these simple narratives to have much more potent meaning. I mean, a story in the ancient scripture about choices and drama and journeys and characters will then mention their way, and suddenly it's a story about all of us. Suddenly it's a story about our connection to God and God's creation and God's compassionate calling uh, that's heard, um, or sometimes it's not. Uh, but way opens this window into not just who they are as characters, but who they are in the presence of God. Let me tell you about their way. Also, the word way is used so much in the Psalms, in the prayer book of the Bible. Um, God, give me the way. Show me the way. God, place me on the way. Help my feet not slip off the way. Sometimes it's translated into different words like path or road or highway, but it's the ancient Hebrew word derek, and it practically blankets uh, the psalm prayers. And then in the, um, in the New Testament, in the Christian scriptures, the first Christians were called people of the way. Of course, the, the New Testament is written in Greek, so the word is odos, but you see this, the Roman Empire was trying, uh, trying to figure out how, this conundrum of the people called the way. And then we see, we see Paul, um, when he's teaching his Christian wisdom, he says, let me remind you of my ways, which are in Christ. Isn't that interesting? And then Jesus himself will say, 
I am the way. Now, if we, if we listen, if we listen to this from our cultural understanding of way, if we listen to this looking for a problem solving tool that we can handle, then we are going to completely miss it. Um, there is this, there's this very uh, immature theology that will supplant our, um, our, our um, spiritual understanding um, of the way with a consumeristic cultural understanding of the way. And it gets us into a really, really messy place. Um, in, our, in our dominant cultural mindset, we hear that Jesus is the way and we translate it as Jesus is the solution. So I will use him. We say, I will use Jesus as my solution to make me rich. I will use Jesus as my solution to get what I want. I will use Jesus as my solution to uh, get into heaven. Um, we, we, we make our own way and then we tell Jesus to do trail maintenance. <laughs> but in the spiritual vocabulary of prayer, um, way is our proximity to God. Way is our communion uh, with God's movement in creation. We don't make our own way. We receive the way. Um, we don't we don't make our own way. We don't create solution sets to our problems. We don't weave together our nifty brilliance into a lifelong Sudoku or a massive crossword. We receive the way, which is to walk in God's presence or sometimes fall down and crawl, sometimes float and fly. Um, we receive the way, which, which is not a means to get somewhere. It's the entire purpose of the now, to be in the presence of God. That's the entire purpose of the now. Let me back up a second and be very, very specific. Some time ago, uh, I got a call from one of those 866 numbers, which means um, it's coming from one of the private prisons where immigrants are held. And when I picked up, I heard through the gravelly, uh, staticky line, a desperate woman. She had been separated from her child and she had no one to help her. And she had been told that she was gonna be deported in five days. And she was certain that she was gonna die. And somehow she had heard of our church. I don't know how, but she said that she'd heard that our church helped folks like her and she was begging me on the phone to do something. Now that is a problem. That's a problem that demands a response. I mean, that is, that is horrible suffering and it is injustice. Um, so we want to be able to say, what is the way that we will respond? Culturally, uh, we want ways that solve. We want ways that resolve. We want ways that leverage our power, whatever it might be. And the, the, the spiritual vocabulary of prayer, though, is very, very different. Um, I, I'll tell you a little bit of what, what happened next. She was crying on the phone. Um, and I, I prayed with her. And these calls are, are time limited. Um, so after the call was cut off, um, I sat down the phone and I cried. Because I, I, it was so heavy and I could see no solution way at all. So I, I prayed. I prayed some more. I shared the prayer with others. And out of that prayer, I called some other folks. And then I called some other folks after that. And then prayerfully, um, we together made an impossible ask. Um, and later on, I was sitting in this scary fluorescent office for a long, long time with very, to be honest, very little hope. Yeah. What were we supposed to do? But five days later, five days later, that woman walked before the deportation judge 
holding the bond that would free her. I, to be honest, I still don't quite know how it all happened. But she stood before that judge and says, she says, here is my bond to be released. And she was released just before her deportation. And just so you know that these miraculous stories are also human stories too, when a friend and I picked her up from the prison, with all of her pent up anxiety and stress, she vomited in the car. She was so embarrassed and, and we didn't know what to do except help clean it up. But I mean, this is of course, this is the reality of the human body confronting stress and having miracle laced into all of that. And a month and a half later, a month and a half of paperwork later, she was reunited with her child. Now, it doesn't always happen like this. We don't always see miracles happen so quickly. But always, always God is there. Always God is moving beyond our power. Always God is moving beyond our ability and our plans and our understanding. And that is the way. We don't make our own way. We receive the way. Which means we're, we participate in the moving presence of God. Now back in the scripture, we see how mysterious and confusing this can be. We, we go to Thomas. Um, and Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How do we know the way? How do we know the way? You know, that is actually a really, really good prayer. How do we know the way? That's John chapter 14, uh, verses 5 to 7. How do we know the way? And Jesus answers him, I am the way. How do we know the way, Thomas asks. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And he says, but from now on, you know me and you know God and you have seen God. Isn't that interesting how Jesus focuses on us seeing the way, seeing the presence of God. Jesus focuses on us seeing the way. So if we watch well Jesus, if we watch well the Christian body, if we, then we can practice the way. We can practice moving in the presence of God. Now, if we had to uh, very specifically describe what it is like, um, what it's like to um, see the way or watch Jesus, I think one of the best words to use is rhythm rhythm. I mean, of course, Jesus was always walking somewhere or riding in a boat. So it's a journey. Um, it's a walk, but, but more, but more for its rhythm than for its pace. Uh, I mean, more for its like dynamic rhythmic balance than for its direction. When we watch Jesus, we see this rhythm between two experiences. One side is this receiving orientation and the other is this resurrection power orientation. There's this receiving and then there's this resurrection power. Um, this, this rhythm, the way it takes us for, first to the receiving place. Um, what I mean by that is we don't make the way, we receive it. We are following uh, like a light that is given at our feet. Or it's like light that's given just, just barely ahead of us so we can see our next step, but we're receiving it. It's like experiencing um, a hand reaching down into the pit for us. It's like experiencing water springing forth in the desert. But, you know, it's like crying after a really hard phone call. Um, and after crying, we realize we have the strength to make another, to make another call for help. And the rhythm of the way, the rhythm of the way then takes us to the resurrection power place. Now that means, that means the transformation of death. 
Resurrection power, to be clear, is always engaging suffering. It's always engaging humiliation and death. It is a confrontational force. It is a transformational force. It is not, y'all, a comforting thing. It's not a maintenance plan. Resurrection power doesn't say, hey, let's get good and let's feel good. Resurrection power is more like, it's more like vomiting in the car after leaving the prison that took you from your child. Resurrection power is, is like touching the wounds of your friend after he died in front of his mother and then you hear him say, death lost, love wins. That's in the Gospel of, of John. Thomas is like, touch the wounds, Jesus says. Let me show you. Let me just say that the big problem with resurrection power, it's always found in the places of death. I, what I mean is the way always leads into places of brokenness and hurt and trauma and fear and darkness because that is where Jesus is always heading. Maybe I could show you uh, this little drawing again. Our, our cultural understanding uh, is that ways are solutions we make. Spiritually though, we understand that we receive God's way. Um, and tangibly in our lives, that looks a lot like living in rhythm. And it's a rhythm of receiving the way. And we receive in pieces, not, not the whole. We see just a step or two ahead. We receive in community too, hearing and seeing with others. And we receive when we are dependent, not when we're faking faith while we try to do things on our own anyway. And then from receiving, we swing into resurrection power. And this is when we participate in the transformation of trauma. We participate in the transformation of fear and death. And we step bodily and spiritually into the scary places of hurt. And we see God's light already there at work. And then we swing back into that rhythm of receiving. The way is a rhythm that carries us. That's one, that's one easy way to think about being people of the way. The way is a rhythm that carries us. Now remember all the problems you need to take on this week. Remember all the solutions you need to generate in the next few days. Imagine, imagine copying Thomas. Imagine copying Thomas and saying to Jesus, I have no idea of the way. Actually, try praying that. Try praying, how do we know the way? It's best, by the way, to pray that with others. It's best also to be ready uh, to just get little pieces of the answer. Just enough light for the next step. And then be ready for the resurrection power and being very up close to it. Because when we pray, how do we know the way? We will always hear Jesus answer, I am the way. Now see God.
Well, welcome and good morning. And we say peace of Christ to you all. Um, we're so glad you all are here, especially to Norma and Frank. Uh, peace of Christ to you and to Jim and Ruth on this definitely a beautiful morning as we start to get towards fall. Uh, and to Karen and Larry and to Dan and Mary and Dale and Jan, all of our uh, couples up north and to Mariposa also in Chicago and to Mitzi and Kent, um, we're so glad you're here. Uh, peace of Christ to Nancy in Indiana and to John and also Abby, who's here, grace and peace to you and to Aurora and Azalea um, and peace of Christ to Victoria and to Michelle uh, and to Jean, blessings to you as well. And to Harry and Celeste, um, we're glad you could be here this morning. And to Lodi who said, uh, Peace of Christ to beloveds of the beloved, <laughs> quoting Pat, um, and to Nina and Chuck and to Danae and Amy and Teddy, uh, peace of Christ to you all and your families. We have, uh, we heard there before the sermon from some of the small group leaders who, who are starting or have started groups. Um, so definitely check those out. If you're not getting the email, you can sign up on our website. Uh, and then also on the email, if you want to, you can sign up for our Slack channel. So there's lots of ways to get information about things going on and the, the groups that we're forming. Um, there's Carlos with the chess group and Jim and Ruth are doing uh, the God Who Sees book study and Ginger and Pat are gonna start a new contemplative book study this week on um, Everything Belongs by Richard Rohr. We also have one more week of the birding group. That's uh, next Sunday. Uh, we were just out there this this morning and there'll be one more next Sunday. And then I think possibly a continuation in the spring, which is super exciting. And we always have our other ongoing groups. There's um, on Sunday mornings, there's Centering Prayer and Lectio Divina, also from Pat and Ginger. And uh, there's the morning prayer group every weekday morning and the evening prayer group in the evenings as well. All of those are on Zoom. Uh, we have several events coming up in October. So this coming Saturday, October 2nd, there's gonna be a blood drive here at the church and gardening. So you can come and plant some plants and then give blood if you like. Uh, and then we will be also doing a couple of seminars this month. So, so October 9th, we're gonna do a seminar here on emotional awareness and regulation. And on the 23rd, we'll do a seminar around the book Braiding Sweetgrass. I was just talking to someone about that this morning. Um, I'm really excited to finally get to meet around that book. On the 16th of October, the music group is going to make dinner for everybody. And we're going to have a time outside here in the plaza with the community and everybody at the church, hopefully, and a talent show. And I have heard some very uh, exciting performances are in the works for that. Um, and thank you also to Mitzi for helping organize. So that's on the 16th of October here outside in the evening. And then the next day on the 17th, we're going to do the covenant signing. So we will do that. We'll have an option to do that in person before the service or also after the service online on Zoom, if you prefer. Uh, and we also are looking towards hopefully getting back together in person soon, ha having worship services in person. Um, Pastor John is going to send out a survey today, uh, so look for that, and um, you can let us know kind of how you feel about all of that, and there's also some questions about um, just generally how you're feeling connected to the church right now and, and things that we can, we can do better. So look for that in your, uh, on Slack, I think we'll send it out there. And you know what, I'm just going to put that in the comments right now in oh, Facebook. Great. I'll do that. By the way, I made it back from the dark. Are you proud of me? I kind of got lost <laughs> last night in the dark. It was very artistic. I was trying to walk from like lamppost to lamppost to really artistically illustrate the message, but I don't know. I kind of got lost in the dark. Let's just be honest. It, it was a good metaphor. We do try. We do try really hard <laughs> with our videos, don't we? So right, in the I'll, I'll, I'll post that right now in the chat. Okay. Thank you. So please take a second to fill out that survey um, that'll be in the chat. And let's have a time now for prayer. Um, so we are going to uh, light a candle for each prayer. We do this every Sunday. We have a chance to 
kind of look back over what's happened this week, and a lot has happened this week, um, and we, we come together here, we can share with one another and um, share joys with one another, and also know that we are held um, in, our, in our suffering and our sadness with one another, um, and uh, that God is here with us, also holding us and, and uh, sharing in our joys as well as our sorrow. So uh, let's light a candle for each one, and then we'll close with a prayer. So I, I want to start with Amy, who's asking for prayer for her mother. So Amy, we lift up your mother who's homesick with COVID. That is very, very scary. And we lift her up um, and ask for healing for her. And John, you shared that Paul lost his mother this week to cancer. This, and is also, ex they're expecting their, a new baby. So we lift up the life of his mother and gratitude for her life. And also their whole family asking for comfort for them and strength as, as they start this journey of a new life. And Nancy, we lift up these prayers for your family who are not including you. And I'm so sorry, Nancy. We lift you up in that and we ask for them to hear God's voice of connection and love. Teddy, we lift up B with you and asking for her to be reunited with her husband. We ask specifically for hope for the family. Harry, so sorry for, for your loss as well. Your mother who died last night after 98 years and three weeks of life. We lift up and light this candle in gratitude for her life. And we lift up you and your whole family as you go through this process of grief. And also we lift up the Binsel family, Sharon, uh, Robert, your, your friend, a friend of you and Melinda, your neighbor who lost their son, Curtis. We lift up and light this candle for him and his life died so young and also for, for comfort and peace for his family and strength for his wife as she takes these next steps alone with her children. Beth, we lift up these prayers for Kyle and Ginny and Finn. And Mariposa, we pray with gratitude that a major decision you have to make in the next month is a decision of privilege, and not life-threatening. Share that gratitude for all of the privileges that were given, all of our, all of the gifts that were given. Lodi, we we lift up that prayer. Also, your continuation of that prayer for Harry and Celeste and their loss. And Jody, we lift up with you and your family and the loss of two grandchildren because of complications before they were born. We, we pray for your children and their partners as they try to heal from those losses.
and sorry I'm just catching up here on all of these Jared we lift up with you this prayer for to see the way for your brother James to join your family And Abby, we lift up this prayer with you for safety. I wanted to lift up also uh, or light a candle for Hillary and Rachel, who are now both have just moved into La Casa, um, our hospitality house. And we ask for a special blessing on them and their, their time there and all that they're gonna be involved in and, and all that they'll take away from that experience. So let's close with a prayer. And since we have a lot of people who are experiencing a loss right now, let's lift up a special prayer in that, in that grief and then we'll, we'll close all together. God, we lift up to you, Harry, and his mother, Fanny, and Paul, and his mother. We lift up the Binzel family and Sharon, especially in the loss of their son, Curtis. We lift up his wife and children as well. We lift up all of these people to you that are no longer with us. And we lift up the gratitude that we have for their lives, who they were all the love that they shared, all the gifts that they shared. God, we know that we are fragile and mortal, but God, we praise you knowing that these people, that their spirits are with you, that they're home with you now. And that though they're not here with us anymore, that their love and joy and beauty that they shared continues on in us and in our world. Your love that we found through them is forever. God, we ask for Paul and Harry and Sharon and all of the people that were touched by these lives that, that they lost to feel our spirits joining with your spirit and, and gathering around them. God, we ask you to comfort them, be with them, soothe their their aching hearts. Accompany them, God, as they begin this, this to walk this journey of grief. And to know that that grief is rooted in this incredible love that they, they got to experience. I ask you to be with them, God. God, we lift up all of these prayers to you, all of these other prayers that we shared, all of these gratitudes, all of our hope and all of the, the amazing things that we get to experience and also all of our sorrow and suffering, all of our worry and our frustration. We give it all to you and we lift it all up to you and your light and your love. In your name we pray, amen. of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of God's unchanging love I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of to rest. 
to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to Thee. Well, this week, I pray for each of us to find the rhythms in our lives that draw us closer to Christ, that help us find not our way, but the way as we enter into this next season, this next chapter, this next week. And so may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and may God give you peace. Our lives are full of wonder and joy, but we know that we are also fragile we have to walk through shadowy places and face suffering. But we know that we don't do that alone. So we ask, God, by your light, let us see your miracles well. By your strength, help us to follow the way that you have made for us. Go before us and behind us. And by your steadfast love, God, heal our broken hearts and help us to offer that healing to one another by your power, transform us. Create in us something new. By your peace, let us find refuge in you. Dwell in our hearts, God, so that we may dwell in you. We ask all these prayers in Christ's name. Amen. Be the sun.